This is the Business of Leadership Series Minute with your host, the best-selling author of Don't Buy a Duck and founder of MarketingStrategyHero.com, Derek Champagne. Tell me, from, <laughs> tell me from a leadership style when you when you did that, what, what were some deciding factors for that and what are just some basic principles or bumpers, parameters that we can look at that we can apply that way? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the easiest thing to start is with, with recognition. Um, how are you recognizing the, the employees? You know, every staff chat, every morning, we start, the first thing we do is recognize people. We have uh, thank you letters everywhere between our staff. We have peer recognition. It's been a culture of recognition. We know our people just want to feel proud of what they're doing and feel the, feel the pride every day. So I would challenge, you know, even these big companies, what are you doing to recognize? It's not just employee of the month. It's actually sitting down face to face saying, you know, I'm proud of you, what you're doing and recognizing that. I think the great book by Ken Blanchard, Whale Done, he talks about the, the whales at SeaWorld and how when they train them, when they do something wrong, they don't pay attention to it. But when they do something right is when they feed them and take care of them. Most business owners and managers, they catch people doing things wrong. They don't catch them doing things right. And every day I'm walking around and our president's walking around trying to recognize them for doing things right. And we will send handwritten thank you letters. At the end of the night, we'll send them a text to make them feel good because they just want to feel cared for. It's, and we have a young generation of millennials. That's all they want. And so that's a huge step. And uh, I, I think that's it's a tangible thing. Think about today. Who did you recognize? And if you can't answer that question at the end of the day, we got some work to do. What is your outlook on continuing to educate and to and to have mentors? And what are your sources for for continuing to expand your knowledge base to be the best leader you can be? One hundred percent. It's it, for for me. It's constantly learning and constantly sharing. You know, we're a part of the Better Book Club, which is a great uh, platform that's been set up where we actually pay our people to read. So and we have all any book on Amazon and we have a platform where they'll read, talk about the favorite quotes, their takeaways and how they fit to our core beliefs. We've built that into our culture and in investing in our people and investing in education and investing in learning. You know, if I could go back to when I was 23 years old and first started this in this industry, I started reading 50 to 100 books a year and I was investing myself with there, but I would have invested more in myself and actually learning directly from the source and meeting with the people from Disney and, and connecting in masterminds and coaching. So, you know, I think my leadership style, everyone knows it's constantly learning. You know, our fans first way is always be caring, different, enthusiastic, fun, growing and hungry. And the last two growing and hungry, they know every day I may send them a podcast. I may send them a book recommendation or a short article. So I think people need to continually develop. And what's great is I'm seeing these 22, 23, 24 year olds that are so much further along than I ever was. And I just can't wait to see them grow and what they're gonna take on in the next few years. And I think every owner and leader should look at that and focus on their people. It's not the what, it's the who. To hear full episodes of the Business Leadership Series, visit blsnow.net.